and, you know, after that, yeah, it just seemed like uh, kind of finding, um, you know, money as it, as it comes in. And again, it's just, it's more of, instead of finding, it's just kind of, you know, now I'm allowing it again, you know, to come, come in and find me. So uh, you know definitely what? excited for today. Can, can I just run through the beliefs that we worked on in that show? It'll sure, start, please. you'll remember it and it'll start to really make even more sense. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we did the law of attraction works for me. It's easy for me to manifest my desires. I'm good enough to get what I want. I believe in myself. I believe in my abilities. I know inspiration when it comes. I trust that the universe, that I'm always supported by the universe. I'm open to receive and I'm able to receive. Hmm. So we did those and, uh, you know, you put yourself into that receiving mode. <laughs> it's great. Yeah. And those were the two, yeah, when, when you were talking about, we were really, you know, um, you know, in meditating on the energy and when, yeah, when those two things we were talking about um, really hit me the most. And that's how I knew I was really, that's what I needed at that time, you know. Um, yeah. But yeah, so it's, uh, we'll, we'll see what happens after today. Maybe, you know, it should be yeah. even better. <laughs> well, today's all about I was, just, I was just realizing that we, well, there may have been a delay in the hookup of the uh, Facebook live stream. I, I verified it's now working. So um, people may not have caught the beginning of that, but uh, uh, that's right. If, you, if you're listening to the live stream and you missed the first few minutes of this, when we're all done, just go listen to the podcast recording. That way you'll be able to pick up the whole thing. And plus, we'll have a video on YouTube when all is said and done. But right. today we are going to kind of do part two, so to speak, of what you were talking about, Carlos, that, uh, that session we did two weeks ago. And uh, of course, our energy coach extraordinaire, Linda Armstrong, is going to lead us in that. So, Linda, I'm going to turn things over to you and let you, as Jackie Gleason said, take it away. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, you know, I came up with a bunch of beliefs that are pretty common. And I'm hoping I can get to all of them today. And we only do have this hour and not even mm. a full hour because right. we're talking now. We'll talk a little at the end. Um, but so I'll just run through the money beliefs that I'm hoping to work on and we'll see as the energy flows, we'll see what happens. And I'm sure it'll be perfect because, you know, spirit will send us what we need. So we're going to be working on you know, the, money doesn't grow on trees. I mean, how many times have you heard that? <laughs> oh, money yeah. doesn't grow on trees. Money is hard to come by. It takes money to make money. Um, money is the root of all evil. Uh, it's selfish to want money. Rich people are bad. Money is not that important. Uh, more money, more problems. Mm. Um, I'm just not good with money. Uh, it's not spiritual to have money. That's a big one for a lot of people. Uh, I don't deserve good things and uh, money can't buy happiness. <laughs> one of my favorite ones is the one that Jack Canfield uh, says, who, who do you think I am, Rockefeller? <laughs> yeah, that yeah. was what he heard from his father a lot when he was growing up. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, and still, and Rockefeller, I mean, people think not, you know, you go to that, the rich man is evil belief when you start that's talking right. about oh, yeah. that, right? So Absolutely. That stuff that's just, we just grow up with it. It's everywhere in the media. It's repeated. People don't realize how they repeat these things that don't help anyone, not them, not the people they're talking to. You know, it, it's like really the wrong story to have downloading into our very cells of our body. So the work that I'm going to do today is going to work to clear that energy that you're holding in the cells of your body because your body does store everything. And so I wanted to go over, and I don't think I did the last time, but while I'm doing these beliefs, you might feel energy leaving. Now, you could feel that in a lot of ways. A lot of times it's yawning, uh, burping, um, goosebumps. You might feel hot. You might feel cold. I mean, there's different sensations that when we get quiet and you get aware of your body, you might start to feel and experience, and that's a good thing, Right? Sometimes there's a little discomfort, um, and when that comes in, usually that's because there's some resistance in the way of clearing this belief, because you know your subconscious mind thinks that it's a good thing, otherwise it wouldn't be there, right? But it's not a good thing, it's holding you back. So that's what we'll do. We'll work to clearing these beliefs, letting them go, downloading new ways of being, believing, and um, just you know new programs to instill into your subconscious mind that can you know, take you forward on, on your journey. So uh, you guys have anything to add before I start or <clears throat> are you just um, ready to go? 
just a comment from one of the listeners. Yay, happy I caught you. Happy Thanksgiving holiday. So I think we're in good. Okay. All right, great. All right, so even for you guys, and I know, Walt, you keep monitoring everything, but as much as you can, you just want to get into that quiet, peaceful place. So I would just invite everybody to um, work with their breath. And the more you do that, the easier it gets. But really, your breath, if you stop breathing, you're, you don't have life anymore, right? This is life force energy. This is, we want, this is, this is it, ki, chi, prana, this is you. So we're going to use your breath to take you to that very centered part of you, the part of you that knows that you are unlimited and that you can actually manifest anything that you want in your life. You're just going to lift all these other layers of energy that doesn't serve you. So for now, just with your eyes closed, really taking the time to be present wherever you are. Hopefully you're not driving or anything like that. And if you are, you can listen to it, but then maybe go home and experience it where you can just sit quietly with no interruptions. Um, so it's kind of like you're just going to unplug. So we're going to use your breath. Deep breath in. Low, easy breath out. Your breath will always calm you and take you to that quiet place. If you're ever feeling anxious or anxiety about anything, you'll notice that your breath gets kind of shallow and, and uh, tight. You know, So we just want to loosen that up. Maybe feel your shoulders drop. Allow your shoulders to drop, just relax, maybe stretch a little bit. Take another deep healing, cleansing breath in. And maybe let out a, ah. Feeling your breath leave, feeling that vibration go through your body as you say, ah. Right, you're really just letting your body know, I'm taking this time out for me right now. And so... I want to start by working on some of these beliefs. So they're common beliefs we hear all the time. And what I want to do is I'm just going to go through this list and I'm just going to pull beliefs. And I'm, what I do is I just send it to the light, whatever you want to call that, source, universe, God, spirit, um, you name it, <laughs> that energy that makes up everything and all things. We're going to pull this belief that is not supporting you, send it to the light. And have it be transformed to something that does serve you. And so whatever comes in is whatever I'm going to say. We're just going to down. I say we because it's not me. I'm channeling this energy. We're going to download this energy into every single cell of your body. No matter where you are and no matter when you're listening, the energy will just flow. Even if you're seeing this hours later, a week later, whenever. So we'll start with that first belief. Um, well, well, it kind of touch on the money doesn't grow on trees and uh, money is hard to come by because really that's that's a belief. That's it right there. It's hard to come by. You know, they say it doesn't grow on trees, like as if there's a scarcity of it. When actually paper money actually does come from trees, doesn't it? It shows you how false that belief is right there, right? That's true. <laughs> so uh, we'll just take that those beliefs. We're going to send them to the light, letting it go. You no longer need it. It is not supporting you. If it had a purpose at one point, it's over. Let that belief go and just want to download for you. Yeah, I'm just hearing, you know, um, money is good. Money is love. So imagine that. We want to replace any beliefs, say that money is evil. Let's pull that one at the same time, being that this is what wants to come in. And we're just downloading, transforming those beliefs, the ones I've already mentioned, into uh, money is love. Because money is just energy. So would you like to know what it feels like to believe within your system and to find your own way of knowing that money is love, that money creates good things in the world, the money has that power when backed with love to create wonderful things, wonderful opportunities, not just for you, but for the people you love, for society. The more abundance you can allow of money, the more you're able to reciprocate that money out in the world because it's just, it's just a cycle. 
You just want to have this open flow. So would you like to know what it feels like to be open to receive money, to not fear letting go of money, to allow this beautiful flow of money coming in, going out, knowing that you always have more than enough. So would you like to know what that feels? Just download that into your cells. I'm always attracting more than enough money for me. Would you like to know what it feels like to believe that money is good? That money does good things in the world. You know, letting go of all those stories in the media because, you know, they're, they're reporting on negativity because negativity sells. We want to replace that. We want to ask spirit what it would be like to allow all these good stories of all the good that money does in the world, how much it helps other people. It's just an energy. It's a, it's a, a means of exchange. Would you like to know what it feels like to be, to feel deserving of money, to allow yourself to know that you are good enough to create and share and express what lights you up in your life and receive abundance in money in all forms in replace of that energy that you're sending out. So it's just this flow of energy. You want to take the, any beliefs that reside in your system that money is the root of all evil. Time to let that go. So all of these things so far that are coming through are pointing to how money is good. How money supports you in your life. And how you are worthy and capable of attracting and receiving and allowing this abundance to come to you in this form. This is why it's coming through. Money is love because everybody can open to love and some have difficulty with it, but we believe love is good. Love is love. Love is beautiful, right? So why not have money be of that same energy? Money is love. It's safe for me to have money. So let's, oh, that's a good one. Okay, thank you for reminding me of that one, Spirit. Let's pull any and all beliefs that you hold that tell you that it's not safe for you to have money. So this is the kind of thing that would go back into even past lives. I mean, throughout history, many people of wealth were killed, hated, and so if you had that experience, you may make a vow, oath, or decision that would prevent you and forbid you from having money because money means bad things will happen to you. So we're just pulling all of that. So right now I'm going to clear for you any vows, oaths, decisions you have ever made that dictate to you, that make you believe that it's not safe for you to have money. So we're just pulling all of that out of your system. Also releasing all the energetic and mental and emotional ties that exist between you and all of the times when you've experienced in some way it not being safe for you to have money, it not being good for you to allow money, to be a holder of money. To let all those energy ties, oh boy, I'm feeling that big. So I think a lot of you are experiencing that. So let's just let that go, let that energy flow. and downloading for you what it feels like to feel and to know that you are safe no matter how much money you have. So let's lift all those vows, oaths, or decisions that compel you and make you limit the amount of money you can hold. Letting that go, opening you up, opening up this channel to allow this flow of love, this flow of money, so it seems like this is a big theme with what wants to come through right now. It's for you to change your conscious thinking as well as all this behind the background subconscious work that we're doing right now. Even taking this as a mantra and adding for yourself a feeling, a good feeling that money is love. Right? Imagine yourself right now just in your imagination as if you can hug the money in some way, like showing the love and appreciation for money, for all it can do for you, for your family, for your friends, for your pets, for your community, for the world. There's so much good. So let's just download that, that money is good. 
money is love. And so let's take any, um, but there's a belief, a lot of people believe they're just not good with money. So they don't trust themselves to have money, that they may mismanage money or misuse the money or use it for so-called not good purposes, right? So we wanna remove all of that, just releasing it, letting go, you don't need it. Allow it to leave, feel that energy just leaving your body. As if it's just lifting up and off and out, letting it go. Yes. And would you like to know what it feels like to trust yourself, to know that you are good at managing money, that you can find out anything you need to know about managing money. Just letting this go. Yeah, so let's release all the vows, oaths, decisions you might have ever made that dictate to you, that tell you that you are not worthy of receiving money, that you are not capable, not talented. Um, yeah, anything that would prevent you from owning this energy of money, allowing it within your system. Let's let all of that go. Let's release any energetic, mental, emotional ties that exist between you and all of the times when you turned money away. Okay, now you might be thinking, I've never turned money away, but I'm sure you have. Someone tries to pay you back for something. No, it's okay. Right, that's all turning it away. But they want me to clear that for you, right? Any energetic, mental, emotional ties, so all the times you did not allow money to come in, when you turned it away, yeah, and part of that is because this stuff running in the background about how it's not good, right? How it's going to alter you, which is leading right into that belief that money is not spiritual, that it's not spiritual to have money. Let's let that go. Spiritual people are so loving. We want to be open to the love. And that's, again, they just keep telling me, this is why we want to download you with money is love. Because with that, you can do so much good in the world. And wouldn't that be beautiful? What if we healed the world through this beautiful energy of love and money, allowing it to function in a way that it's meant to function, to be helpful, to bring good things to you and others? Um, so yeah, so let's let go of any beliefs that dictate to you that you don't deserve good things. <laughs> let's let it go. Uh, let's release all the vows, oaths, decisions that compel you and make you feel that you are not deserving. That you're not deserving of money specifically. That you're not talented enough to receive a lot of money. Let's open you up to know what it feels like to receive an inspiration and act on it. Because spirit wouldn't send you an inspiration for something you can do that can actually bring you lots of money if you are not capable of doing it. So would you like to know what it feels like to trust yourself, to move on the inspiration that comes to you, knowing, allowing, with the mindset of, if this is coming to me, spirit sending to me, there's something good to be had from all, so that you can then share that out in the world, right? Again, just freeing money of any of these these beliefs that money is evil, you know, that the big corporations are evil. Let's look towards, would you like to know what it feels like to have the insight to be able to see and appreciate all of the good sides of every one of those negative stories you've ever heard? Corporate Corporations are bad. Well, they're employing a whole lot of people and they're feeding a whole lot of families, right? So we just came off of Thanksgiving. Let's practice gratitude for all aspects related to money. Would you like to know what it feels like to instinctually take a negative story about money and look for what is to be grateful within there, to be able to notice and see and realize and feel for yourself the good that it does. Um, so there's the belief money is not important. <laughs> it's not that important. Um, 
you know what? That, that has to go. We're just going to pull it, send it to the light. They're saying, yeah, money, money is important. You know, money is one of those things that helps you in this world because we have this agreement that we receive this green energy. <laughs> Let's call it that. Whatever form it comes, it's electronic, it's paper, it's gold. Um, yeah, that it is important because it does help you in your life. So would you like to know what it feels like to allow all the abundance of money to come into your life so you can live a life you love, allowing others to live a life that they love by you holding that container, that energy, that space that proves how money is good in the world. Let's be the catalyst for how to bring this energy of money is good and have that because you cannot change anything for anyone that they don't want to change, but you can influence. So by you holding this high vibration around this energy of money, you open that door for people just walking by to catch the wave, you know, to feel the energy, to have it permeate them in some way so that they too can join in with this flow of abundance. We're, we're talking about money today, but it really is anything. It's an abundance of anything that lights you up, that makes your life better. That's what we're really opening to. But there could be a lot of things that we can consider that to be. And so we want to bring it down to this energy of love. In whatever way that, that wants to come. Um, and let's go to, okay, there's the belief, more money, more problems. <laughs> I've said that. I had to clear that one you know more money more happiness okay we're just gonna flip it more money more happiness again more love more good I can do in the world that's where you want to just shift your focus to all the good that it brings um, how about this more money more big problems I can help solve right because bigger problems sometimes need a whole lot more money we know that right so let's uh, Let's be a channel for that to come through and solve big problems in the world by having big money. <laughs> big money. Okay. And uh, rich people are bad? All right. There may be some bad rich people out there, right? But why do we have to put that label on everybody? There's a lot of good people out there. I know many wealthy people who are always sharing. I have many wealthy people who've helped me out in my life. Just out of the goodness of their heart. They didn't have to help me. But they did because they could, right? So let's look at rich people as caring, loving, sharing. People who can help you step into who you truly are and actually be who you came here to be by helping break down some barriers for you, by being that example of the good that can come from money. Yeah. Um, let me see what else we have here. Yeah, I've probably touched on this, but money can't buy happiness. Well, yeah, let's throw that one out. <laughs> 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 Lift it, send it to the light. Oh, yeah, so they're saying, you know, money can't buy happiness. No, money can bring a whole lot of happiness. Money can bring happiness. And I'm seeing this image of like um it, it was kind of like as if uh it's almost like they're not birds but they had wings like these like like dollar bills of wings flying down actually into my heart okay so that's how it came just like this it's like just uh, like little angels of love let's look at it that way wow isn't that a cool picture thank you for that one okay and um yeah, so actually, I, I'm, I'm kind of going to let it go with that for right now, but I want to take you, I'm just going to, since a visual came, I want to take you through a little tiny bit of a meditation here because we have a little bit of time. So I want you to connect with a subpersonality part of you. So I want you to imagine right now that you're just sitting in this beautiful meadow and make it be the most perfect, or somewhere in nature, and have it be the most beautiful, perfect place for you, the right temperature, the, the sun is out, maybe you feel the sun on your skin, 
Maybe you smell flowers, trees, grass. Maybe you're seeing butterflies, birds, just this beautiful place. And then you notice there's this mountain off on the, in the distance. And so we're going to call to you right now a subpersonality part of you, a part of you that is trying the best way it knows how to serve you. Only it's running off some old programs, some old patterns, some old beliefs, and it needs to be transformed. So we want to evolve this part of you. So I want you to imagine you're just in this beautiful place and this part of you, a, a part of you, maybe you see this part of you as a young child or just some other point in your life. And this, it, actually this part of you, it may not even be the same sex that you are right now. It could be male, it could be female, it could be any age, but it's a part of you representing something in which no longer serves you, something that's holding you back. So you allow this part of you to come closer. And I want you just to look at this part of you. See how it appears, male, female, age, what it's wearing. Maybe you just see it as a color. Maybe just sense it and feel it in some way. You know that it's there. And you just ask this part of you, you know, what is it that you're trying to do for me? Because it is trying to do something good for you. It's just running off some old programs. It doesn't, it needs to be evolved. And so you listen to this part of you and maybe you just look at it with so much love and compassion for this part of you that, that just needs to be evolved. So you ask it if it would like to come with you up to the top of that mountain over there. And of course it says yes. And you tell it you want to take it there to transform it into working with you in a way that really supports you. So it lovingly says yes and wants to go with you. And so you can take it by the hand, however you want to do it. You can run, skip, jump. You can imagine just snapping your fingers and being there. However you want to get there to the top of this mountain. I want you to just find yourself there now at the top of this mountain. And you're just looking out far and wide. And you're looking out at your future. And you're telling this subpersonality part of you what it is you want to create in your life. So tell it right now, all the things that you want to create, all the things that you're working on, all of your dreams could be in any area of your life. And it's listening to you, telling the story. And then you turn to it and you say, I have a new job for you. And I want you to give this part of you a new job, something it can do for you that will support you in what it is you want to create in your life. Maybe you want it to give you a heads up as to the things that are for your highest good that are coming your way. Could be anything. <laughs> Maybe you want it to help you to enhance your psychic abilities. Maybe you want it to help you to get your word out to the world. Maybe you want it to help you to stay on purpose. It could be anything. Whatever comes to you, just trust it. And now what we're going to do is call in a master. It's a very high being could be uh, Buddha, Jesus, an archangel, uh, someone in spirit who knows what it is you want to create and who was so successful at it when they were here on the earth. So you just call in this master and you invite this master to come over and you take your subpersonality part of you to the master and you leave the subpersonality right there with the master. And you step aside. And so you watch the master start to work with your subpersonality. And the master puts his hand over the top of the head of the subpersonality. And as this master is giving this healing to this subpersonality, you notice it start to change and evolve. You notice it start to blossom into something more. And you're just watching with so much love and so much appreciation for this energy work that is being done right here, right now. And then when the master is done, the master takes the subpersonality over to you. And you're once again joined with your subpersonality. And you both thank this master for working with you. And the master leaves. And now you look at your subpersonality, you just hug this personality part of you. It's working so hard for you and you hold it like a little baby and just nurturing this part of you and as you do that you open up your palms your hands palms up 
and the subpersonality turns turns and transforms into a symbol that drops right down into your hands. Any symbol, whatever comes to you, just trust, even if it makes no sense. And if you don't get a symbol right now, just know it will come to you at the right time. So you're looking at this symbol, and you're in awe of this. And you take it and you just put it into your heart, merging with this subpersonality who's just been transformed to help you to create all that you want in your life. And you're so grateful and you just feel so filled with love. You take a deep breath and you let it out. And you start to make your way back to that meadow or that place in nature where you were. And again, you can skip, you can fly, you can run, you can, however you imagine, get in there snapping your fingers, you're back in that meadow. And just feel yourself sitting there in that meadow and just feeling so much fuller, so much more complete, so at one with this new part of you that is so inspired and so ready to help you in your life. So you sit there. You just start to imagine what your life will be like six months from now. And as you're sitting there imagining your life six months from now, you notice this part of you, your future self, coming close to you. This is a part of you that is your future self that's already created what you want in your life six months from now or more. And so you're with this future self. And you're looking at this future self and you can feel the energy this future self is holding of the success you've already achieved. And so you just imagine as you're standing in front of this future self, you imagine this beam of light that's connecting the two of you, joining you together. And within seconds, you feel yourself merged with the future self. You are now that future self already wearing, already holding the energy of all that you desire. It's already done. And so you feel this energy, this reality, and you, you take this energy, you know it, this energy, like I'm buzzing so much right now with this connection, just feel it, this is real. And you just sit in it for a moment, becoming really familiar with this energy. And you thank your future self for showing you, for coming and for sharing with you what it feels like to already have this desire. And I have head to toe goosebumps, so I know you must be feeling this. And so you thank your future self and you separate from your future self. And once again, you see that line of light connecting from your heart centers. And you know this connection is there. It's not going away. All time exists at the same time. You've just experienced your future. Holding that energy now knowing that every step you take takes you closer and closer to that desire in your physical now reality, we'll call it. And so I want you to just sit in that energy, really feel it, maybe bottle it up in some kind of a mental image or even putting a word to it that you can use as a trigger to bring this energy to you. Success, love, whatever you want, the desire, whatever word pops in your head, it doesn't even have to make sense. Trust that it is the right one that's going to pull to you whenever you say it. This energy of this future desire already existing now, because that's how we manifest. So just take a deep breath, letting it out, feeling this energy all around you. And just sitting with that energy, but opening your eyes and looking around the room wherever you are and noticing anything that's different. Maybe colors are brighter, more vibrant. Maybe you feel bigger, like you've expanded outside of your body, like you're more feeling the fullness of who you are. And just stretch a little bit, wiggle your fingers, your toes, start bringing yourself back into the here and now really feeling the earth beneath you, imagining even roots going down into the earth, really grounding yourself in, because you really need to have that balance between the heaven energies and the earth energies. We are spirit living in this material world. We need to blend the two, hold them both, 
because that grounded energy, the deeper you can ground, the further out you can go in this connection with spirit and in creating all of your desires. All right, so that felt really good. I'm going to just leave it there for now and check in with Walt and see. That was um, great. Yeah, and, and we had quite a, a slew of people coming through for that. So this has generated quite a bit of interest and people were sticking around and hearing what you were doing. So good stuff. Thank I want to invite anyone um, who cares to, to share in the comments section, uh, if you're listening in the uh, live stream in the Law of Attraction Changed My Life group, um, share some comments about what it is uh, you were experiencing or, or uh, any thoughts that you have about um, the experience while you were, while Linda was leading us in this. And uh, Carlos was definitely into it. I could tell he was just in that Zen place. He was just in it. So uh, I'm going to go to Carlos for a moment first and just get his take. What was it like? What were you experiencing? Yeah, again, I just, you know, I just kind of uh, get into, you know, as, as deep a meditation as I can and then let whatever words are going to speak to me, they'll, they'll speak to me. And uh, for me, it was, uh, you know, especially in that guided meditation, you know, really letting go of, uh, this uh this thing where this part of me right that that is uh can be easily satisfied right? and so um which is good it's, it's it's it was it's been there to help me feel good and to you know celebrate wins and, and small wins and those things but at the same time sometimes it gets in the way as far as um allowing me to go further like i feel good about things before they've even all the way happen and then maybe I don't even need uh, them to kind of manifest fully. I kind of take the feeling and maybe that the rest of it kind of drops off. So I kind of change that, uh, you know, personally into, um, into courage, right? And the courage to do the things that are necessary for me to grow in my career, right? And so that can come in many different, you know, forms and, um, so yeah, so that's that's kind of the you know the symbol that I had in my hand was a lion, you know, and so now that's that's kind of my thought for that um, to con continue to you know uh, nurture that thought or that you know that new transformative uh, you know feeling that it used to be something again detrimental, and I feel I really felt it transforming, and now I feel very just courageous and and ready to going to take on on uh, on the world so that's kind of what I was going through and then as far as the money is concerned you know really what spoke to me was the unblocking of the uh, of the deserving and I think when you said that um, you know giving away money and I do that a lot I, I, I've done that a lot and like you said it's not necessarily just giving away money this is when you may pay for something extra because it's convenient and you really didn't need to spend that money or you just kind of frivolously, you know, oh, well, this doesn't matter. Or you, or you paid something late knowing that, you know, there was going to be a late fee and you kind of just said, oh, you know, it doesn't matter. And then you kind of, again, those are times where you just give away money that you really shouldn't be giving away. And it's, and it's, I think it, ha it had something a lot tied into just not deserving it or, or not feeling comfortable um, having it maybe, you know, and so that, that was big for me when I was listening to that part of it to, to just be very self-aware of that and, and try to, you know, let that go, you know. So, you know what's so fun? As you, were, as you were talking about that, I saw the lion. I totally saw the lion. Right. I, I, I just knew you were going to say that. Um, yeah. And I found like early on, like I have one of my tattoos, it's a flower, because my future self kind of gave me this flower. And uh, it was, the message was like, stop and smell the roses, you know, like mm -hmm. enjoy the here and the now, you know, enjoy the journey kind of a thing. So I, I, I put it on my hand so I can mm -hmm. always connect to it. <laughs> you know? right. And I need that little reminder, I find myself off somewhere else. So you, that's like my trigger. So. It could be anything. Like I could mm -hmm. see a really cool like lion medallion necklace or something for you. you right. Know? Like that. I was thinking. Yeah, I was thinking of a coin or something like something like that. Coin, something something like to have in your pocket. Where I can just have, yeah, and just you know, that's uh, that's you know, just like a thought. I'm gonna share this um, 
crystal that I'm holding right now because I just got this one uh, and we're going off on another tangent here but hmm. I programmed this these crystals with uh, growing my business and reaching more people helping more people right. because I've used things like that like this is my trigger every time I hold this I connect to the dream the, the mm -hmm. already being there of right. reaching so many more people and helping people to really love their life because that's what my mission and goal is um, and I created a lot of things by having something that's tangible that you can connect to um, mm -hmm. that will take you there so right. like the meditation that's how it kind of came out at the end there um, and uh, that's kind of the purpose of that so I'm just saying that yeah, yeah. to kind of get to create an anchor almost you know this is yeah right yeah some of the uh, comments that we received, uh, Brownin said uh, that was awesome. And Jeffrey, speaking when you were speaking, Carlos, he, he wrote the comment, thank you so much, and go Carlos. So he liked what you were saying. <laughs> uh, Beth Ann said, thank you, Linda. That was incredible, incredible abundance. I saw my child self. She was about seven. That was an interesting ah. comment. And Beth Ann was the one. Beth Ann was the one who uh, sent that email that uh, we read earlier too, okay. which is very cool. You know, a lot of times they come in around seven, eight years old, because mm. like that's at a point when we start to realize the world is actually bigger than us, and you're trying to find your place within it, and you start to give your power away even more to things outside of you. So a lot of times when we're healing things, it'll go to that that age. I've seen myself as the eight year old so many times. <laughs> yeah. Very cool. And then um, Nasha came in and said, wow, feeling, uh, let's see, I'm going to read it off here because I wrote it badly. Um, getting back my strength, courage, all the way back like never before. So that was pretty Oh, another right courage. There. Yeah. Um, Jeffrey said, the belief of nice people feel, finishing last permeates, which kind of ties into the theme that you um, were describing about mm -hmm. how we have these limiting beliefs. And then yeah. uh, when you mentioned your crystal, Brownon had to type in, I love my crystals. So she wanted to share her <laughs> love with you. <laughs> yeah. Good comments there, really nice. Um, uh, well, first of all, I, I wanted to make sure I got our messages in before I forget, because we always want to let people know this is uh, just one of many things that we do here on the LOA today. Lots of different topics, discussions, all kinds of stuff. And we don't want you to miss any of them. Um, <clears throat> we actually had, excuse me. <clears throat> We actually had a couple of uh, technical difficulties with prior uh, podcasts. The last two that we did before this one, in both cases, we weren't able to live stream because of some technical issues with Facebook. Well, if you're a subscriber, you get all of them. They come automatically all to your smartphone. So please do become a subscriber so you never miss any of these. Um, and plus, they're there for you to play anytime you want to. In fact, Beth Ann's email pointed out how she listens to not only all of them, but she replays some of them. And that's the beauty of having them on a smartphone because you can just keep playing them anytime you need to. Um, I, I know this one right here, the one that uh, we just did, the, particularly your portion where you were leading us in this meditation, that one's going to get a lot of replays, I think. People are going to want to play that one over and over right. again. But, but you want to make sure you get them. So become a subscriber. Um, now, I, if you're listening in the uh, Facebook group, I did put links in the description for this particular post. But uh, there are other places where you could be listening. You're at, maybe uh, perhaps on PRN. You could be listening um, through the, uh, the website. Um, we post in a variety of different places. So um, if you're looking at the uh, post, listening to uh, uh, just the audio or perhaps seeing the video too, and you're not seeing links in the description, just go to the homepage of our website at LOAToday.net, and you'll find nice big links there for Android phones and for iPhones and iPads, and just click on your link and it'll walk you right through it. And then do as Nash has been doing. Nash has been our greatest supporter in terms of getting the word out there. Please put out in social media that you're listening and that you're enjoying LOAToday.net so that more and more people can be a part of it, get their daily dose of happy. Um, and we love the fact that uh, the folks at uh, the Law of Attraction Change My Life group are happy to have us live stream there, so that's also a good outlet. But we want everyone who listens to keep sharing and sharing and sharing because, Linda, it's like you were saying, we want to live, and can you imagine what it's like living in a place where everybody is just letting the money flow, where everybody is just letting the energy flow all the time? That's your, you said that's your big goal. I certainly share that goal. It's a wonderful goal, and I think we can get there. Now, How about you? Um, were, you, were you able to experience Walter? Or you were monitoring. Was I? Much? Well, I was. I, I was going back and forth. I mean, like you said, I had to go monitor things and you know check on what was going on with the feed and 
watch what was going on and then try to sink into the meditation and then jump out. And so, yeah, it's a little, I'll be right. playing this one back myself so I can actually enjoy it in full. But I, I did enjoy the parts that I actually had like a couple minutes where I could kind of sink into it. Um, I, I, I did, I couldn't fully follow all the steps that you were doing just because I had to jump in and out. Right. But uh, yeah, no, it was very cool though. In fact, I'm, like I said, I'm looking forward to, to replaying it. Oh, by the way, um, we're also uh, part of the early part of this uh, particular uh, podcast, the, the live stream to Facebook got cut off. I, we, we caught everything that you did, Linda, but the part before that got cut off. But the whole thing is going to be on YouTube. So there's a channel I've set up on YouTube for all of our podcast videos. So if you missed the first part and you wanted to see the video of that, you'll be able to, to hook in there as well and, and pick all that up. So. Good job. This has been good. Um, we actually have a little time left. We can take questions if anybody has questions. If anybody wants to, you, you could actually bring up anything. It could be about uh, you know, attracting money. It could be about any issues you're having with the law of attraction. Um, but we've got a panel here that, that loves to give advice and loves to help people out. You know, so take a moment and if you'd like to share any questions or challenges or issues or thoughts or feelings or anything that you've been deal dealing with because uh, we'd love to help you out with that. And um, I'm trying to think what else I want to tell about? Well, I do want to tell one other thing. Um, the weather here in the Northeast has been really, really cold, like we talked about early on. And so that led Louise and I to stay home for the Thanksgiving holiday. And we just had Thanksgiving ourselves. We, a lot of people you know, get together with family and so forth. So I've heard tales about you know, 25 people getting together, 50 people getting together and so forth. For us, it was two. But the nice thing is, even though it was a very, very quiet celebration, it was a great opportunity to just sit and be and to feel being. And when you're in that feel being place, it's very similar to the meditative state that Linda was leading us in a few minutes ago. So I, I, I don't know why I think to say that other than to me, it was a correlation. I mean, Linda, when you were leading through that, I felt like it felt yesterday on um, yeah. Thanksgiving. And, and the thought that kept coming to my mind over and over again, one that doesn't always come to my mind, strangely enough. Um, uh, every Thanksgiving holiday, but it kept coming to my mind, I have a lot to be grateful for. I have a lot to be grateful for. And I'm, I'm hoping I can continue to carry that through all the days because every day should be Thanksgiving from that perspective. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> that energy of gratitude, that, that's the high vibration, right? It um, is. You can't go wrong there, you know. <laughs> Things will come to you that you don't even know that are destined for you to have happen because now you're open mm -hmm. for them to come in. That's that thing with when inspiration comes to, to just flow with it and not let all the fear of this other stuff get in the way. Yeah, I think the holidays are great for that wall. Um, just because, you know, your, your comment about being, because the holidays is a time where it's like everything's closed usually. You know, yesterday there was stuff open, but everybody's with family. Like there's less expectation on you. You don't have to really think about what work wants from you what this person, like, you just get to, especially when it's, hey, it's just us two, we don't know, we're not expected to be anywhere, we don't have to be on time, and like, all of those thoughts that we kind of have just on a daily basis that kind of create um, this, uh, you know, you not being present, you know, all those during the holidays are usually, uh, if, you, if you're by yourself, I should say, when you have family and stuff coming over, Forget about it. That's, <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's that's nice that you were able to experience that. Uh, a few comments have come through that I wanted to share. Uh, Nasha said uh, during it she felt like she was on the highest glacier. That's an interesting perspective to have to have had, and uh, she also was one of the ones that I, I highlighted as being a great sharer of our podcast. And and she said, of course I will. Thank you. It's my pleasure. <laughs> We appreciate that, Nasha. Jeffrey says you are all helping people, and then Nasha and Jeffrey both had questions to raise. Nasha says. What's the best way to take a decision and stick to it for life? What's the best way to take a decision and stick to it for life? You want to take a so, swing at that one? I actually had a good uh, story of the guy, this, this uh, professor from Harvard, uh, I forget what his name was. Oh, uh, Christensen is his last name. So anyways, he was uh, you know, very into his own religion. I don't remember if he was a Episcopalian or something, but he, he told this story about um, he, you know, never did, uh, played sports on sa on Sunday on Sabbath, and the college champion was he went to Oxford, and the, the championships were on a Sunday. And he's and he said, you know, he he decided he wasn't going to play in it. And his coach 
you know, really wanted to play. So he kind of was like, hey, I'm sure that, you know, God would understand this one time. And so he, so in telling that story, uh, he was trying to get at the, the point where he said, I made a decision for myself. And um, once you decide, then you, there should, there should be no question later on as far as like, oh, if, you know, if I can do this, this one time, if I can do it the other time, because if you can't commit, you know, to yourself, um, there's not really, I'm kind of losing myself. <laughs> if you can't commit to yourself, like there's nobody else that's going to make that commitment for you. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. No, so, I, like, I would if, you, also... if you break it, if you break it that one time, then there's always going to be another time. There's always going to be like, oh, well, what about for this situation? Or well, what about for that situation? But, um, you know, that's why, you know, if you, if you just make the decision, um, but then also, uh, I don't know exactly the decision you're talking about. So I know that Linda talks about breaking some oaths and things that we've made that kind of blocked us later on. So maybe you don't want to stick for decision for life, but again, I don't know which decision it is. So this is where I wanted to go uh -huh. because for me, what I liked, but the way I, the way I would look at it is, of course, you want to stick to whatever it is that is for your highest good. So that could change because we're always growing and evolving. So just what Carlos was just about to say, sometimes there's a reason for something to either turn into something else or even just to switch directions altogether. So I like to keep it open to whatever it is that's for my highest good. And I'm just going to follow that guidance as it comes to me. So I don't know if that helps in any way. Because again, we don't know specifically what it is you're asking about. Um, so, yeah. So, but Good but job. to allow yourself the freedom to know when to stick with something and when maybe it is time to let it go and evolve it into a, a, something that is more for your highest good. But that's good because ultimately we can choose to have, ask something to stick, and it, it it's great for us for a while, and then we reach a point where it no longer serves us, and we need to let go of it. Uh, like you yeah. were leading us to do during the uh, the meditation there. So yeah, it's it's good to be selective about what it is we want to keep and what it is is that is more temporary. Um, Jeffrey another, also has a couple of questions. Oh, go ahead. No, go I ahead. Say another, reason, another reason why I say that too is because I know I know a lot of people who all of a sudden discover. I mean, maybe they're in their fifties and they've been in this one career for their whole life, but something is driving them to want to switch careers totally and completely in another direction. So if you have to stay so committed to that one thing, then this other thing that wants to come out of you it won't be able to be born, right? Because right. you've got to stick to that one thing or what, you're a failure? You know, there's so many things that could come in the way. So that's why I like to leave the, the wiggle room of what is for my highest good. Because people, especially with this crowd, we're talking law of attraction people, right? Spiritual awakening is like the next step. It's already happening when you're first learning law of attraction, but it evolves and it grows and evolves and it grows. And as that grows, you start to realize a little bit more where your purpose is actually aligned. And so it might go off into another direction. Well, Carlos just did it, didn't he? He did. Yeah. yeah. He this left the cool. corporate world to go follow his heart and That's right. heal people through laughter, you know, so. That's very good. Um, I don't know if we'll be able to have a lot of time to go through it, but uh, Jeffrey had a couple questions. and uh, We have like a minute to do them, so I'll, I'll be real quick. He says, do you get people with money issues that also have trouble asking for help? And then as a follow-up, he said, it's hard to feel abundant when we are surrounded by people who display scarcity mindsets. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that, that that's a lot to cover, but Linda, we'll give it, can you give well, like a quick I, answer? What's a quick, quick response? You, you can look at it and don't take it in. So you're going to be the master of your own domain. You're going to you're going to know where your boundaries are. You know what you can take in and what you're not. You got to allow people, like without judgment, to be where they are. Mm -hmm. You don't have to take on their energy. So it's energy boundaries, you know. And then you see their story. Don't make them feel wrong for it. But you don't have to adopt it. And you tell the story you wish to live. That's a right. good way to end. That's that's a great ending point right there. I love that because uh, unfortunately we're out of time. But this has been a wonderful session. I want to thank everybody who joined us for the live session here on Facebook's Law of Attraction Changed My Life group. And Carlos and Linda, Carlos will be uh, talking to you next Tuesday, Linda next Friday. But Carlos, have a great weekend. You too. Have a good one, guys. <laughs>
And Linda, you you have the same. I hope you have a great week too. I'm sure you will after that session because I mean you just brought so much good juju to yourself. You're just gonna be flying, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm flying high. All right. All right nice and we'll see you guys. all. Absolutely. We'll see you all next time here on LOA today. Goodbye, everybody. Bye-bye. No more music. No more music. And we're going to say goodbye to Facebook.